things have a way of Okay, we'll reconvene the meeting. We just came out of an executive session for the purpose of the discussion of hiring of a village official. I'll call the meeting back to order at 7.05. Um, welcome everyone. It's the February 2nd Village Council meeting. Um, announcements. <laughs> Happy birthday, Brian. Ooh, yay. <laughs> Any other announcements? Mary Ann, do you want to announce the yeah. movie? Yeah. Um, so I, I, I've reported um, the last several council meetings on a group that's been meeting um, called, uh, we're calling ourselves the Climate Action Planning Group. We're still we're searching for a name. But this group has various facets to it. And one facet is looking at uh, reducing our waste consumption, which uh, we will probably be working on possibly in the energy group uh, um, and the environmental commission. At any rate, uh, Green Environmental Coalition along with Tom Clevenger, who has a background in waste reduction, are sponsoring a um, movie at the Little Art. It, I think, is free. Yes, it's free at 3 o'clock on Saturday. It's called the Clean Bin Project. It's supposed to be very um, informative and entertaining about a couple who contested against each other to see which one of them could have the least waste. And so at the end of the year, then they came up with how, how much waste they, they saved all of their waste, <laughs> which was not very much, apparently. So um, I would encourage people to come to see this movie and uh, you will be hearing more about the Climate Action Planning Group in the future. Thanks. And just I'll jump in um, with something that's connected. On April 18th, I know it's a long time in the future, but on April 18th, the Chamber will be sponsoring Shred It Day it's in conjunction with Glen Helen um, Earth Day. And we'll be bringing in the Shred It truck. And these folks are all certified for confidentiality. So you can bring all your old tax stuff Three days after, uh, three days after your taxes are due, and get it shredded, and it's all confidential. They they certify that it's all um, shredded confidentially. So um, I think they probably do it in front of you. They but do, they do. So you, see it on, you can actually see it on a screen. Yeah. Oh. The truck. When they lift your stuff up, you can watch it. Oh. Oh, get shredded. Confetti shred. <laughs> so, yeah. And then we'll have a party. Then with all the with all the confetti that comes oh, well. out of it oh that should be um, composted yeah <laughs> that's true um yeah uh i just wanted to highlight the uh, uh yellow springs help.org training that is going to happen on uh, february 18th it's at the library from three to five and this is a training for service providers to learn how to basically input their data so that they can then uh, be part of this online resource guide uh, that we're developing. So uh, please come if you're interested. Great. Anything else? Okay. Uh, moving on to a review of the minutes of the meeting of January 20th, page one. Page two, yes, um, under old business where it starts with we noted on the western edge of the glass farm. It should be the eastern end. Okay. Uh, anything else on page two? Page three. Page four. Page five. Page page six. Page seven. Page eight. And page nine. I have a motion for approval, please. I move that we approve the minutes. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And now the minutes of the January 22nd um, special meeting. Um, do I have those in here? Yeah. <laughs> one page, literally, one page, <laughs> one page. Yeah, half a page. Um, <coughs> all those in favor, signify, or because I have, can I have a motion to so approve? So moved. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Absolutely. 
And uh, now to review the agenda um, as it stands. Was there anything that anybody wanted to add to the discussion? Yeah, there's the, uh, um, the application from the Arts Council. And uh, maybe that goes under old business since we talked oh, about yeah. it at our last meeting. We can do it right after the annual report then. Um, citizens concerns yeah let's do that yeah and then um, I know John or Patty one of the two had I have the um, the what I put before council about ICMA the ICMA under new business but I also have the uh, um, the request for you to think about making a decision on the solar array to have the groups present should have been in the packets did you yeah it was in the packet. The I, I'm sorry. There was the, a I, I put a. Uh, yes, you put it on the solar array. Yeah. To, yes. It was a little bit hard in an electronic form because it was sort of separate from your report. And I was like trying to figure out what it. What yeah, it, it probably needs to go under old business, and we can discuss it under okay. old business. Um, what is it? Solar. Just put a solar array. Okay, um, and then Lori, do you want to review the petitions and communications? Sure. Um, I'll review the two from uh, from Karen, uh, Pastor Aaron. Sorry, for wrong. Pastor Aaron from the Presbyterian Church wrote an appreciation note to the police department for their work on the recent burglary they mm -hmm. had there, and M J Gentile. Um, wrote regarding both the drug task force and the wetland opposing the drug task force or our participation in the drug task force and supporting the wetland grant. Um, and then Brian had was the sort of sponsor of about four pieces so I thought maybe you could just summarize. Yeah let me that. clarify a few of these. Um, so uh, the first thing is uh, we just wanted to include the HRC request for support form because uh, we had the meet and greet last Thursday and we wanted to make sure people could find that and also announce that it can now be found online. Um, so you can just uh, on the website search for it's, it's on HRC. It's on HRC's subsite. Yeah. Right. That's the easiest way. Okay. Um, <coughs> The Street Musician Performer Agreement, this is an attachment to the uh, Public Art Commission annual report, actually. Um, but uh, Judy and I thought it would be good for everybody to see how we're going to format the front and back, because we said we were going to disseminate those to downtown businesses. The plan is to get those laminated so that they're, you know, they won't get messed up. And. Um, Actually, the proposal related to the Arts Council's member show is from Nancy Mellon, uh, their gallery director, and that's a follow-up uh, based on our form that we talked about last time with their letter, so they've put that into a new format. And uh, I thought everybody would like to see what has been going on related to municipal broadband and next century cities. There was a letter that was put together that was submitted to the FCC. Um, Patty, of course, has been our liaison with that project. And uh, we put together, um, I ended up signing on behalf of council. We put together a blurb about why this is important to us. And uh, so that organization continues to uh, be doing a lot of, I think, exciting things. Right. And John will be taking over um, for Next Century Cities because he's going to be the representative to CAP. Great. And those two things kind of go together. So. Thank you. I, I appreciate, well, whatever everyone did mm -hmm. in this regard, I read this letter that they're submitting. And I, 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 I'm assuming that corporations, the big corporations are trying to keep communities from doing their own. Mm -hmm. right. Right. So this is important. Yeah. Thank you. And this is a follow on to, you know, Obama's, uh, you know, part of his uh, address where he talked about how important <laughs> this is. So. Uh -huh. Okay, thanks. Um, uh, Brian, are we, can, is council going to consider this under the, because it does require council action. Yeah, that is, yeah. we're going to be doing that under your. Under old business? The, the, yeah, the first under old business, under old first business. item under old business. Right. I thought that was just the annual report. But, okay. Yeah. Um, okay, um, moving on to public hearings and legislation. Uh, first, we have resolution 2015-04, naming approved check signers. 
Now I can wait on through this. No, I <laughs> think we can do it by time. <laughs> All right then. All right, this is uh, resolution 201504, check signing for U.S. Bank general checking and guaranteed deposits. And this is just adding John Young's name to the, the uh, list of signers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, can I have a motion to approve the resolution? I move that we approve this resolution. Second. Um, all those in favor of, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. Next, we're under resolution 2015 06. Assuming there's no commentary or question. Anybody have, nobody has I, any questions about any of that. I don't right? think we should consider it. Oh, well, you know, I mean, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> kind of um, resolution 2015 06, approving the name John A. Eastman Water Reclamation Facility for the water treatment plant. Yeah, this would be renaming the Village of Yellow Springs Water Reclamation Facility. Whereas the village would like to recognize the contributions that John A. Eastman made to the improvement of water quality in the region and specifically within the village of Yellow Springs. And whereas John A. Eastman made a superior contribution as the village engineer during the most recent project upgrading the village of Yellow Springs water reclamation facility. And whereas John A. Eastman contributed significantly to the quality of life in Yellow Springs and the surrounding area in numerous and varied ways, now therefore Council for the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio does hereby resolve that. Section 1. The Village of Yellow Springs Water Reclamation Facility shall be renamed the John A. Eastman Water Reclamation Facility for the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio. Thank you. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. So, um... I am sure most of you um, know that uh, John Eastman did uh, pass uh, near the end of the year, and he has been um, a great resource for the village. Uh, he's a professional engineer and was our consultant for the water reclamation facility that started probably, that project probably started back in 2006, 2007. I mean, it, it's, been, it's been going on. Spent a lot of time on that. He's just always been a great advisor. But our crew, our water reclamation crew, worked very closely with John and uh, felt very strongly that uh, they would love to remember and honor John in this way. And um, this is basically just the piece of paper saying we're going to do it. Then we'll go through a process of actually ordering a sign and, and making it so later in the year, um, hopefully when it's a little warmer and drier, we will have a formal dedication that will invite the family and the, the community to. So um, keep your eyes open and ears open for that, and we will be announcing it. Um, any comments? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. And I, since we didn't mention it before, it's kind of related. I just wanted to mention the article that was in the online packet from Treatment Plan Operator, which again recognizes the amazing water reclamation facility that we have in Yellow Springs. Mm -hmm. um, so 2013, we got an award for that plant. You know, once again, they're in the, this magazine. And it's really cool because there's a plant in Canada, there's Yellow Springs in there, and really nice article. And that is something, as Brian said, um, that is in online, in the online packet only. And it actually is, it's an excellent article. It has pictures of all of our guys. It's very personal. It's very nice. Joe is incredibly proud of it, as he should be. So um, please do, um, if you get a chance, go online and take a look at that. Uh, the next, now is the time in our agenda where we hear from citizens about items that are not on the agenda. Um, we ask that you come up to the front, um, speak into the microphone, state your name, and um, we have three minutes. You'll have three minutes to state your concern, and um, that's, and, come on, Nancy, come on up. <laughs> Can I give handouts? Sure. Great. Would you like to take take one and pass it along? And, and also take one and pass it along. And I'll try to be three minutes. Uh, my name is Nancy Kelly. I'm appealing for a relief from installing a water meter at, one, at 128 West North College Street at this time. 
Uh, last August, my husband and I purchased a small house at 128 West North College, whose pictures, some of the pictures you have in front of you. The house was built in 1865 and has been unoccupied for about 10 years. It was in deplorable condition. The rehab has been significant and a lot of fun and a lot of expense, uh, much more than we thought. On January 16th, as a matter of course of action, I called about water service and met a representative from the village who agreed that the meter, which we had to remove during rehabbing the second set of pictures, the, the, the black molded bathroom, um, uh, was, and it was badly corroded, uh, that, when we, that when we learned we'd removed it, that then we were gonna be required by ordinance at our expense to put a in-ground meter at the front of the property. That was a shocker. Um, on January, the calendar only shows you a series of meetings and conversations. If you have any questions about what I learned from any of the individuals, that's primarily why I provided it. Uh, Judy provided me the ordinance, 1978 ordinance, as well as council meetings leading up to the ordinance. I was looking for the council's intention for the ordinance. There was no discussion about why the ordinance came to be for the in-ground front of property pits, although we can all make reasonable guesses. But my question was primarily was this was the was this a method to move all houses into in ground front of property meters or was it intended for new construction only. Everyone I spoke to on that list has a general understanding that if house un undergoes extensive uh, rehabilitation and the meters removed for any reason whether it's broken black mold or witches um, that the ordinance kicks into effect but no one has been able to show me where that is in writing that it's obligatory. The ordinance specifies that a permit is necessary. No connection, quote, I quote this, can be made without a written permit to do so. At no time has anyone I've spoken to on this list suggested that I need to have a permit to install a meter, which further adds to my fuel that it, perhaps it is intended for new construction in a booming growth period of the, of the history of the village rather than redoing all the old homes in town. The house, this particular house has other issues other than my whining about the ordinance. Um, it is, you're kidding. Sorry, is that, that? Yeah, this is three minutes. Sorry. Oh, okay. Well, I know you've been waiting. We'll, we'll extend it for- Oh, really? We'll, we'll, give, you, we'll give you some more time. <laughs> that is fast. Um, the, it's in the lowest piece of ground in the neighborhood and the water runoff from both the street and the neighbor's uh, property drained into it. It's an it's a 1865 home. I think the other houses were built up around it. Uh, we had to jack the entire house up and replace all the sills on the base, which you see in the second or third set of pictures, because they were gone from water rot. No termites like the water, apparently, but the water rot took the sills out. So we had to re, 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 reshore up the whole thing. It was extensive. Um, and what there is more extensive work to be done on this property because it is a major drainage problem, um, which we will do in the future. But right now, the structure is solid as a rock, uh, and it's soon ready for occupancy. Uh, we have several concerns about the water pit itself, the water meter pit. The low ground will turn this into an immediate cistern, period. It will be filled with water. There's something called galvanic corrosion, when you have two metals submerged in liquid that creates electrical voltage, which will wreck the piping at a faster rate than if it were in dry land. This, this is gonna be the effect of the copper piping required by the ordinance and the steel. I don't know whether the village has steels, but the pipe going to the house is steel. So they will be submerged in liquid and premature failure. Um, and the other possibilities, which are very distinct, is that it will require from us a major rehaul of the line to the house, um, it, which is exp expensive at this moment. Um, so I began to look for alternatives for the problem of the expensive water meter in the front of the property. The alternative, um, the simplest solution I found was picked up from European philosophy is they don't like their gardens torn up and expense so they put a simple lock door on the side of the house the meter reader opens the lock and looks at the meter and it's red there's no entry to the house I also found a simple wireless system for $270 from EK Men market uh, uh, metering in California which is very uh, proactive in water control um, that could be installed in the house and could transmit uh, signals to for reads or the uh, monitor could be put at the window, so again, there would be no entry necessary. 
On January 7th, on 19th, I spoke to Lisa Crum, a Montgomery meter service supervisor, about more about the radio read systems, which I'm sure the village is beginning to look at. They service 86,000 meters, 83,000 of which are homes. The benef benefits of this include um, improved efficiency, no more estimated billing, no human misreads, no need to enter private homes, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what took them a week of individual meter reading, now they do in two hours. They are extremely glad they've done it and they know that it's absolutely the way of the future. Later, when I was looking for a solution for meeting the needs of the village and meeting our financial needs, I spoke to Lisa again about the availability of contract services with the village of Yellow Springs. I'm not sure if the village has looked at that option. They are amenable to a discussion about with village representatives. This could be negotiated and then the village would not have to have the upfront start charges, which I think is where some of the numbers I'm hearing from Johnny. I'm going to be able to give you one more minute. Yep. And, and then, then wrap up. okay. So if so that we are not forced to do a hasty job in, in mitigating the, the water or pay a thousand or fourteen hundred fourteen hundred dollars, which is the quote I have now for putting the meter in um, and into a wet environment so that the water inspections can be passed and I can put a tenant who is waiting in the house um, and move on. And so the council might consider um, a, a retrofitting of radio read meters into the older homes. I'm appealing to the council to allow the meter to be reinst reinstated in the original location on the house for the time being. Okay. Thank you. Um, I, I'm, I don't know that this is a decision. I don't have enough information. I don't know that this is a decision that council c can or should be making. Um, um, I know staff has has put some things together. Uh, you know, what kind of a time frame are, I, I mean, I feel like this is really a staff uh, a staff decision. Staff is typically. Stuck with the ordinance yeah. and, the, and the idea that it is supposed to apply to older homes in these situations. Well, I know that it, you know. I had we had to do that in, on the in the house that we live in because right. you can't have. I don't want the meter reader coming into my bathroom, getting down in his hands and knees, and you know, looking around the toilet to read right. my meter. And that's right. what was happening. And that's what's happening in these old homes is that the meters are inside the house and it's inconvenient and virtually impossible to get them read. But, but if it is possible to put it in the house and have it read and I mean you mentioned, but we mentioned don't, several. But, but we don't have the equipment. But here, well, here's, the, here's the thing, okay. Uh, Johnny, why don't you come on up while we address this. Um, Johnny and I both have some concerns about the, the lockbox idea. Um, one of them is the fact that it's above ground potential freezing, that kind of thing. Um, the uh, idea of the, the radio read meter in the window, the remote read in the window, we discussed that when you came into the office. And while I'm not saying that you would play with your readings, if I let you do that with your system, somebody else is gonna wanna put one in there and they could, we, we can't have, we need to own the meters. We own that, the meters, period. Um, Johnny, do you want to address some well, of your concerns? She, she's pretty accurate on her on her estimate. I've got estimates for the same property from anywhere from nine hundred to fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, but we've also had other people come, mm -hmm. uh, want to do the same thing, put in a radio read and all that. And the answer has been, we follow the ordinance. And I know of one that it cost thirty five hundred dollars. They didn't like it, but they complied to the ordinance. We are in the process of uh, looking into the radio system. It's just not going to get here fast enough right. to it, suit everybody. Right, and council <clears throat> does know that's part of the capital budget that you did approve yeah. to do was to start the putting in the radio read. So we know that that's the way to go. It is a time savings. It, and it, it, and is it's a more lot. expensive on the radio read if it's located in the residence versus in the pit because it has to go to a different style meter. The, the problem with uh, Ms. Kelly's property is, is when they did the plumbing, they redid everything. They've redone all the plumbing in the house, all the electrical, and I understand that. But they cut out the meter system. 
if they would have done it after the meter, we wouldn't have said not a thing about it because they would have just rehooked it back up. There's nothing there to hook the meter to anymore. So that all has to be reworked. Therefore, it needs to go outside in a pit where we supply the meter bars, the valves, and they splice into their con or into the water line underground. What about her concern that it's going to be underwater? I don't. There's Antioch has got a bunch of them full of water. I mean, meter pits fill with water. Yeah, they there's a drainage. There is uh, pea gravel that's in the bottom of them that allow it to drain, but it's not going to hold water. Yeah. And if the if the water meter breaks, the other safe thing is is it's outside, it's not inside. And it's ours to replace. Correct. At we, that point, we it's own ours. The meters. At that point, it's ours to replace. Right. kind of ganged up against. Can I say something else? Yep. <laughs> um, the one thing that disturbs me about the expense is that mine won't be the $1,500 one. We know that. It's an older home. The excavation process is, I, I figure until I know I have $10,000 available to reconfigure the front of this property, anything that we're doing is kind of a waste and it needs it. And I'm not exactly sure who replaces the walkway. That I haven't researched, whether I am responsible for that or whether the village replaces a damaged walkway. So I have a, a lot of ongoing angst about the expense. But one of the things that I think is particularly um, worrisome, I think, about going into this pit system when so many communities, Fairborn, um, I uh, talked to Al uh, Kuzma and, and he's in Kettering and all these people that have these systems with meters in their homes that are radio read is that they only cost less than $200 for one of those meters in the house and they're owned by these services and I, I don't know why we're not looking at a contract service. There's, I would be happy to pay several hundred dollars to have a meter in my house so people don't come in my house. I think there would be a lot of people in Yellow Springs that would love to upgrade as opposed to waiting to the next 35 years when their turn comes up to pay 1500 and up for what amounts to $223 worth of water services for the year. It, to me, the dichotomy between cost of engaging the pit, which is not necessary for future radio read, and the benefit of getting your $223 worth of water a year is, is just is unreasonable. I, this is, I, I, I just don't, Jerry, do you feel, you're more connected with the utility department, do you feel like this, where do you feel like we go with this? Uh, we, we have an or ordinance, folks in the past have complied and been asked to comply, uh, we are looking in the future to change. Her time frame doesn't fall in that. I'm, I'm not amenable to changing the ordinance or making the making I don't an think the ordinance needs it. changing because it's very clear that it's for new construction. But that's not true because other houses, other existing residences, have complied to the ordinance. And it's been interpreted that way. Well, we have to we have to have access to our own meters. That's the that's, that's the whole the sure. whole thing, sure. um, and yeah. that's that's the goal. So it doesn't really have to do. So the European method of open door seat meter is not adequate. I mean, it's some expense for me to do that, but I'm happy to do that. Well, uh, this is uh, this. Uh, these kinds of things are very difficult for us to do when they're sure. thrown at us right. at the last oh, minute. Yeah. A ton of information. We can't possibly make a good decision right. Right. under yeah. these conditions. And this so. is purely staff. I mean, I, I we've heard we've heard from three staff members who are supporting one who are supporting one <coughs> one solution, and I don't feel. Um, competent it, it, you know given the, the options we've been given it feels like the time frame isn't going to fit any of them for you I mean this is something you want done virtually immediately no, absolutely not I don't care if we ever do it let me explain the economics that I from my point of view my point of view on the economics and, and we, I'm not being we can't spend so, yeah. more time on this okay. we've got a yeah. lot of other things on our agenda yeah. what would you suggest I do can I ask do who John and Patty, mm -hmm. you you both agree that this pit thing is what it, it needs to go outside, in my opinion. I mean, you know that there are reasons for it. There are safety reasons. There are um, uh, liability reasons. There's uh, access reasons. We own the pit. Once it goes in there, if it goes bad, it's our responsibility to fix it. 
it needs to go within the six feet, Johnny, of the roadway. Six feet of the front property line. Um, the sidewalk will not be, uh, it'll go on the house side of the sidewalk where the property line is. And so, the material for the bid for the customer, uh, the day supply is $225.04. Not correct. I have a quote here well, in my we, hand. Let's, yeah. we're, oh, so yeah, thanks, Nancy. Nancy. We, that shows that it's $450 from the, from the firm that you sent me to. Okay. So, I mean, you know, staff, staff agrees that it needs to be out by the road. Okay. Um, so, that's, that's, you know, well, that's right. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Nancy. Um, any other citizen concerns for items that aren't on the agenda? Okay. We'll move on to special reports. Uh, Public Art Commission annual report to council. Uh, Brian, do you want to introduce that? I do. Yeah. So, um, it, and it's mentioned in the annual report. Uh, basically, after the Public Art Commission was established, it was pretty much on hiatus for a year. Uh, there was one project initially, which was the Bronze Sculpture Symposium. This past year, in February, we started meeting again actively. And as I was like Lori talking about the Arts and Parks uh, Commission, I mean, it's become uh, a very busy commission, a great place for vetting projects, for community collaboration. And uh, as I mentioned before, we've also got the uh, street musician agreement attachment. And so Dave Turner, who has just been elected as our new secretary for the Public Art Commission, uh, is here to present. And uh, I'll let you take it, Dave. Well, that's one half of what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> really? Um, there was done in 2014. You've got this. I'm not going to read it. I, this, I hope you can all read. Um, and I've done a number of things. Started out doing arts things, and then, as Brian said, other things crept in, um, park-like things. Uh, my suggestion is we become the Parts Commission, because you can find parts, parks parts. and arts that, that you can end up with parts. neatly. Um, this year, we're going to be working on fleshing out the scope uh, to determine some boundaries because, as, <coughs> we st as I said, we, and Brian said, we started out talking about arts things and, and then musicians, which is arts, but it was public spaces, and then the spillway. And, you know, should we put a bridge over something instead of putting a sign saying, don't walk on the slippery metal thing in the water? Um, and then other things came in which were not arts, but in the public space. So that phrase public space has been uh, floated around a lot um, and I would say that other than looking at this the thing that's the most significant to me and we've talked about this in our meeting is that we've uh, done a you know a lot of spent a lot of effort trying to involve as many people that are infected by whatever it is that we're working on as possible with the uh, skate park we talked to people who use the skate park uh, and we had a lot of really good uh, effort put in by people who um, used it uh, and an engineer AJ Warren has done a lot of work and some other people who uh, know about that and care about it people did some work on their own to uh, to retrofit things and fix some things up we invited people from the village we talked to uh, the police when we were talking about musicians and you know motorcycle noise uh, you know Patty's come and you know done a good job of you know providing a wealth of information about a lot of different things uh, the council representatives have been there. So when we're talking about something, we're hearing from the people who are affected by it and trying to come up with something that satisfies, you know, everybody's needs as well as, 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 well as we can. And I think we've done a fairly good job with that. I haven't been hearing anybody complaining about it. So um, that's really about all I have to say about it, unless there's some questions. But again, the specifics are, are in here. There you are, ma'am. All right. Thank you. You guys did a great job. Nice picture. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, nice <Dave>. report. <laughs> this can be a sample of so we, for others. Have we, yeah, I guess we as part of the work on commissions, have we talked about the scope of the arts and making that official? Because we kind of just made that as an ad hoc decision. Right. That it would be kind of arts and parks because... Yeah. We didn't have any other place to put the parks. I feel like uh, when we're doing some of this work, we are gonna, we should look at, uh, the, you know, as, as Dave mentioned, the scope of at least the Public Art Commission. And you know, we have talked about should it be the Public Space Commission, um, 
And I, I feel like our members are, are game for that scope, but just having some clarity there. Um, it certainly makes sense given the evolution of that process when it was use of public space. Um, so I, I think that will be a decision we'll have to look at as we're kind of seeing each ordinance and what we're going to change. Um, and that was really the genesis of it. I right. mean, actually, it was the public space issue that exactly. was the genesis of it. I like the idea of having the word art in it. You know, I mean, it's, I like the idea of having the word art, and I like the word, idea of having the word park, mm -hmm. just because those are, I think, those are the buzzwords that I think are going to be more interesting to people than just public space. But you just need to make, you know, I think make a decision. We that, could call it the public arts and parks position or commission and then have in the description the the remit about public spaces right right and uh, you know kind of I mean this is connecting to a lot of different things like Marianne's proposal that we'll talk about with the goals and you know as Dave said we're certainly looking at goals and I think we'll make some recommendations to council and, and see if that makes sense for what we want uh, the Commission to do okay. Johnny, maybe you and Nancy could talk out in the hallway. But remember, we have to have our door open, so um, uh, if you want to talk, it's really better to go downstairs. As long as it doesn't become sort of a dumping ground for I don't know what to do with this here. What are you going to do about this? Right. Here? That's why I think getting a clearer remit yeah, would make I, more sense. You know, that would be that would be a good thing uh, to do. You know, we had a discussion in the last meeting about various things, and I remember specifically what it was, but the idea of the, not having a budget came up. Uh, not that we necessarily have anything we need one for, but if we are tasked with or expected to do things, it'd be nice to have that, that considered. I'm sure you would do what I think do that. That's something to keep in mind when asking us to do something. Uh, because most of the time, I think the approach has been come up with an idea and then, okay, Yes, you know, we've given it our own. We like it. Go ahead, council, go go do this. You know, skate park, you got money and you got people who care and know things, go make one. Um, and then we'll move on to something else. Okay. I, I'd like to um, put something else in the pot here. And I don't know if council is really aware of the purview of the Environmental Commission. When you read the uh, ordinance establishing the what the Environmental Commission covers, it's about everything. Mm -hmm. Not only even in Yellow Springs, I mean, <laughs> and it includes the, the built environment as well as the natural environment. So I think that we should probably be having some discussions with the Environmental Commissions around the area of the parks in particular. Well, the Environmental Commission of 10, 15 years ago did a master plan, a parks master plan for the really? village. So yeah, that was, it never was, and we've got it in, we've actually have it planning. in Word and yeah, it's in the comp plan. Okay. It, I don't think it was ever formally approved uh -huh. by like council. Like so many things. It's, <laughs> okay. But, well, I mean, I but they, it, it's actually pr a pretty that, decent plan, um, yeah. Right. I think Judy has so access to that somewhere. Yeah, because yeah. you okay. sent it to me right. many years ago. So yeah. yes, yes. And it got transferred into an actual Word document because all we had was a photocopy. Yeah, and then I think, so, yeah, somehow I managed to convert it to a Word doc. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I like Marianne's idea about some collaboration where, you know, there might be things like youth programming that we could work together, so. And obviously planning commission is involved with any yeah. land use issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's why the... The, the Parks and Rec plan actually went to Planning Commission. Right. We we discussed it and looked mm. at it, and I don't remember what we if we actually so came to any decisions about it. Council. No, it was it was before. it was well before, but we looked at it because oh. it ex we knew it existed, and we were wondering what should we do with this thing? Uh -huh. Should we okay. update it? And honestly, it I'm a, yeah, it was, it was written done. in the nineties, and. Um, I honestly, this was only a few years ago, but I can't remember what, what if anything, we did as a result of that conversation. But we did actually take some time to look at it. Well, and when we're talking about collaboration with, between commissions, um, the with the wireless, yeah, that really should has has a role with planning commission. Yep. Too. So. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so I do want to reiterate. Uh, 
a, a big thank you to the Public Art Commission. It's been a great working group, um, a lot of really good brainstorming going on, and, and I think just about all these projects have come back to council table. Uh, so I feel like it's certainly benefited our decision-making process. Uh, so thanks, Dave, and thanks to everybody else. Great. Thanks, Dave, thanks, Dave. and thanks yeah. to the rest of the Public Art Commission. Do you want to, will you please say who all, one of you, the two of you, Name the members. Did you have you named the members? I, I haven't. So uh, so actually, we also uh, elected. I was going to save it for our next meeting, but we now have an, a chair, which is Christine Monroe Beard. Um, so we've already met Dave, our secretary. Uh, we've got John Fleming, John Hudson, uh, Matthew Hausch, um, uh, AJ Warren is an alternate, and did I count everybody? Um, yes, oh, and uh, Patrick O'Reilly. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so it's a great commission, and actually we still have one spot left uh, on that commission. So we'd love to have a full, full group because we can tend to be quite busy. And because it's Brian's birthday and because we want to hear him talk more, <laughs> the next item on our agenda is the Arts Council proposal. Okay. Um, so we uh, looked at the letter that Nancy had submitted at our last meeting and uh, the issue came up that we there is a policy which was included in our packet um, basically the policy boils down to um, we will entertain uh, sponsorship of a nonprofit project if it meets one of our village goals um, and uh, in this case, Nancy's focused on, uh, I believe it's goal number three, about being a welcoming community. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so I think, you know, it's great that this proposal is, is now in the packet and something that people can easily find, because I do think it provides uh, a nice venue. I agree it's very specific. Um, just a reminder, <coughs> what the Arts Council is requesting is that the village essentially sponsor their member show and sort of show our support for our local artists and our creative community. Um, so specifically asking for one of the, the cash awards to be sponsored on behalf of the village, which would be $100. Um, so I th think, I mean, I, I felt like the proposals pretty well articulated in terms of uh, relating it to a village goal. Um, so I thought it would be good for us to discuss. Well, I, I'll make a motion. Are you ready for that? Uh, sure. I, I uh, move that we uh, provide the Arts Council with the, the request of $100 for this purpose. Second. Further discussion? Uh, yeah. Um, We have had requests in, in the past, and, and, and it's been nominal, and the one I can think of, and it didn't come on on the form and so forth, uh, was the request for the uh, soccer term, which what we did is we, we did an in-kind service, and theirs was a nominal amount also. Um, and my concern is even though it's a, it's a very small and nominal amount that uh, we're setting the precedence uh, that we're, we're sponsoring an award. Um, I, I just don't think from a, from a public standpoint, I, I just, you know, I can't, I couldn't go along with it. Uh, if they were asking for some type of service that I could, could do it in kind and so forth. But once I get in the position where I mm -hmm. start to sponsor awards certain segments. Okay. Now I've got a way. Yeah. A good award versus a bad award and so forth. Uh, again, if it was uh, an in, in kind service, I would or if they want me to provide a certificate, I would not have a problem with that, but providing a cash, if I read it correctly, a cash award, I, mm -hmm. I, I, 
I don't think we we should be getting any as, as a council. Patty, could what line item of the budget would this come out of? Um, well, I'm going to assume that it would come out of the council budget. Jane. Well, according to the policy, it, it just set, refers to the general fund. Um, I, I would still go with the recommendation that I talked about last time, which is that it could come out of our special events council um, line item. Right. Just because to me, this that makes sense that, you know, sort of council is saying, hey, you know, we recognize that the public art, our local artists make the village a special place. And so we would recognize it um, and take that on ourselves. Uh, what we've done with our special events budget in the past is um, sponsor, for example, the, uh, the Christmas party uh, that we had for uh, village staff. Um, but we didn't, we spent less than half of that budget last year, so. I mean, I don't disagree with what Jerry's saying. And I, you know, I wish, you know, I think the, po I'm glad we came up with the policy. I'm glad we came up with the form. I wish maybe we had a little bit more, you know, this could be between $100. I mean, this, this form and this process would apply to, you know, thousands of dollars. And it seems kind of silly to say no to $100, but it still, it still is a precedent and it's still um, kind of starting a ball rolling that we didn't have rolling. So I wish we had, maybe we would have put a few more constraints on how we would use that money. Um, you know, maybe that's something, you know, can, we could look at the budget. I mean, maybe we, we have a very small budget of, you know, $1,000 for things like this so that it wouldn't get into, uh -huh. I mean, it's almost, like a, it's almost like a little advertising budget or something. Right. And that, our special events budget, by the way, this year is $1,000. Um, last year it was 1700 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And you had $353 left at the end of the year. Last year. So am I, am I hearing that when you say our budget, are we talking about there was a budget set aside for ours? Or for village, council? For the village council special events budgets, the kind of thing we right. used for sponsoring parties for the staff. The employee um, the holiday thing. I think when we did the uh, the picnic to welcome Patty and to say goodbye to Kent, that was mm -hmm. a special event. Right. Right. So this is slightly different than that. Right. And so I think what I hear Karen saying is, um, for tiny little things like this that we might want to do, it might be good to have a little bit of a line item. Mm -hmm. Even if it was like $500, just saying council has up to $500 to use for it just very sort of right. nominal, like goodwill, sort of community goodwill right. um, kind of thing. It would, it would um, uh, just the idea that, that, so there wasn't a sense that we're opening a huge floodgate, but more of a, there's this tiny amount, and when it's gone, it's gone, and um, so that people don't, so that no organization right. feels like, well, let's just try and see if we can get ten thousand dollars or something. Right. right. It, it, you know, and I do feel like um, I do feel I don't want to belabor this. We don't need to talk about this for that long, but I do feel like we have the past few years we have pretty significantly supported the arts um, in the art cans and in. Um, uh, public space for the arts and, and staff working on public space, installing art in public space. So I actually do think, you know, based upon, you know, compared with some other items in the village that we actually have, are starting to show um, some investment um, in support of the arts greater than we had other things. Um, you know, I, let's, let's just go ahead and take a vote. I mean, that said, you know, I think it's something we need to think about. I'm willing to support this hundred dollars. I think I want to flesh it out a little bit. Maybe, you know, have Patty think about it a little bit too. But I'm willing to support this one. And I would say it can come from the the fund that, as long as it comes from the fund that Brian suggests, which is a very small fund and has very limited, you know, right. um, you know, we can't. Well, then, then, and that. 
but I think it might be a good idea to to, to try to tweak this policy a little bit for clarity. And we did have a motion in the second, right? Yeah. yeah. And lots of discussions. Um, you, Marianne, do you have any thoughts? I, I'm, I'll vote for it. Citizen comment. Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Um, you need that back. And where did my agenda go? Next item on the agenda. What's the next item on the agenda? Sidewalk. Um, yes, sidewalk repair and funding discussion. I will turn that over to either John or Patty, who's ever going to take that one on. I will take that one on. And if you don't mind, I would like to go ahead and tie it into the levy timeline because, as you can see, the um, the little sidewalk funding update thingy that I wrote you actually ties into the levy, um, mm -hmm. the levy timeline that you asked Melissa to look into and is under new business. Um, so as you can see from the levy timeline that Melissa um, got from the auditor's office, um, at this point we will have um, three potential opportunities to um, put the operating levy that we currently have in place back on the ballot for renewal before it expires. Um, we, um, Melissa and myself, in, in speaking, think that it is better to go ahead and put it on the November ballot for this year because it's better for us for budget planning purposes to know that that is going to go uninterrupted, you know, forward in the, in the, um, in the budget scenario. Um, but that said, um, the rest of the discussion was whether to add an additional millage um, for sidewalks and what that millage would have to be in order to accomplish council's goals of repairing all of the sidewalks and potentially installing some new sidewalks in areas where there were none. And we were going to base the millage on the inventory that had been done of the village sidewalks in the past. Um, Jason Hamby has that inventory, he's looked at it, <coughs> he feels, excuse me, that it is badly, number one, badly outdated, um, and number two, that the numbers haven't been trended at all. So he's going to have to do a lot more work on that and has asked for some more time to do that and, and get that information together. Um, but as you know, um, what Jason has with his inventory, it's a five-year repair plan that was going to cost anywhere between six hundred thousand and seven hundred twenty five thousand dollars depending on the price of the concrete and what you did when um, that was a 13-year plan not a not a five years 13-year plan and now what we're talking about is potentially a five-year plan that would encompass still the entire village and that would make a significant increase in the millage necessary to get the sidewalks done in that shorter period of time at today's dollar figures. So Jason has asked to have some more time to work on that. He feels that he can have that ready by March. Um, but at this time, Melissa and I would like to recommend to council that we go ahead and put the basic renewal of the levy, plan on putting that on the ballot at the November 2015 election. <coughs> Um, I, I want let's talk about that I want to talk about these two separately because that in and of itself deserves a lot of discussion I'm not prepared I'm shocked because I had asked for that information last year so and and I I thought we were a year out so um, I'm very surprised and I don't know that I'm ready to put it on the personally ready to put it on the ballot this November um, okay. but you know, the sidewalk, Jason's issues with the sidewalk, I mean, what Jason's plan for the sidewalk sounds great to me. I mean, I certainly, he needs more time. <laughs> um, an issue that we, we all got an email, I think, from Krista McGaw. I don't know how many of you had, had a chance to read it. Mm -hmm. She just brought up the issue that when she and her husband moved um, into their house, they live in the church on, on um, Xenia Avenue, mm -hmm. and she's, they, have, they have the pears, the Bradford pears down there that have gotten incredibly large. And she said that they had to repair sidewalk for the heaving tree roots. 
that's the other thing that has kind of gotten out of the longer, the broader discussion. We've dealt with it downtown. What are we going to do? How are we going to handle tree roots and that whole tree discussion? Right. And I know that that's something I think that John's had experience with. So that's something that I think we need to factor in. I think it it is we need to factor it in. You know, who takes his trees down? If somebody wants the trees down, who takes them down? Um, you know. So, so it, it again, it makes this discussion yeah, the, increasingly more and more right. complex. The, the whole sidewalk issue is is very complicated. I mean, a lot of a lot of folks think that it's simply who's going to repair it, but it's not just the repair of the sidewalk. Sometimes it's the tree and the roots, and how do you <laughs> make the sidewalk work around the tree roots? And do you have to take the tree down because nobody really likes to take a tree down, especially when it's big and beautiful enough that it's actually raising the sidewalk up. Well, and and actually, Krista, I, I emailed Krista back and um, she, because the tree committee put those in, she didn't even have a feeling that she can take them down. Well, and I said, well, I think they're on your property, so I'm pretty sure you if they're in, If they're in the tree lawn, what's called the tree lawn, John, you want to take this one? If they're in the tree lawn, which is the area between yeah sidewalk and the curb then uh, they're in this, they're in village right away so uh, under our agreement with the tree committee now after three years uh, we would take responsibility of the tree uh, anything so on private property mm -hmm. anything on private property would be uh, private property response uh, owner's responsibility to remove uh, another thing I'd like to add about the sidewalk repair is that if we are interested in saving the trees uh, it would cost a significant amount more amount of money uh, per square foot to put in something like a rubber concrete uh, stamp type uh, treatment which would be more flexible around the tree roots but also give us our sidewalk um, which could be a, comp comp a possible compromise but it would be more expensive right. they don't like those trees they're pears and they right yeah well yeah mess. and it's essentially in most places what happens is the village is responsible for the care of the street trees which are the ones in the in the yeah. tree lawn and the homeowners are responsible for the sidewalk in most places okay. um, Brian was in the interview the meeting with the auditor uh -huh. um, and actually that was I think one of the things we was it that or utilities we talked about but um, I mean that's the way it happens in most places the village is responsible for the trees and the care and maintenance or removal of the trees if it needs to come down and the homeowners responsible for the for the sidewalks in in Bellevue uh, we did have an exception for trees that were planted by the city uh, that the city would repair the sidewalks around the trees if it was planted by the actual city right. and what would the okay I mean that I guess that really depends on what kind of agreement we come up with the tree committee on and and I mean that's a whole nother discussion that I don't know we want to get into now but when Jason comes back in in March if that's if that's when we have this discussion again maybe we could um, pick up on how the trees are being handled and right um, and John's already placed. working with the tree committee on on that mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, we've um, already had future, a meeting. Right? right, we've already had uh, at least I've had one meeting total, and you. I had another meeting with you. Had yes. another meeting just with, um, so we're already talking to them about specifically where they plant them, how you know what types they are, that kind of thing. But our big issue right now is the present. Right. Yeah, that was addressed in the large group meeting. I have a question. Are we? Do we have the finishing? the west side of Xenia Avenue in the 2015 budget for, for downtown for streetscape yes it wasn't put in there but Jason um, took it upon himself to ask if he could reallocate some of his funds and do uh, half of it he says not the whole thing because he doesn't think that that entire project should be done all at one time but he um, asked for permission to reallocate some of his funds to do uh, at least half of it the same portion of what we did last year I guess I just part of that is just wondering if we are going to do something with sidewalks this year not keeping it not being absolutely stagnant that we're not going to do anything no. that it's in limbo yeah Jason Jason came to me with a proposal um, to reallocate funds at, within his own budget Okay, so that will that come before council again you think or is that um, I don't you, think you, you does that do you have to move that line to line no it was 
it was, it was all, all within his uh -huh. so he was just instead of it going towards paving i believe it was going to go towards sidewalk right so. okay yeah he's he's still going to do paving but he wanted to move part of it to do right and would that involve taking down trees at all or just mm -hmm. sidewalk i think the one tree johnny you've looked more detail at those places is the not the one large tree staying yeah, I think it stays. The sycamore, the sycamore, sycamore stays. The sycamore stays. I don't think there's any trees on that side. There, there are two. There's <coughs> one there, yeah. up by um, Bonnety's, and, and there's one down by Fubbs, Mr. Fubbs. And I think they, they both stay. I know the sycamore stays. The sycamore does, but I don't think the one by... I, I don't think any pears are staying. I mean, no I, I, I certainly would, say, would think that no pears are staying downtown. So, yeah. Okay, so council, any comments about the sidewalk situation? I mean, are we, I think we're just saying we're, we're waiting we'll wait, for Jason wait. for more information. Yeah. Okay. Thank uh, you for that, and thanks to Jason for all his work, and thanks, Johnny. Oh, it looks like. Oh, I'm sorry, I Joan. I'll just, I, I, I would like to say that um, while I understand that it's been uh, the past practice to have homeowners be responsible for the sidewalks. Um, and it would be sort of nice to have homeowners do it. I really think um, philosophically that I don't think the sidewalks benefit the homeowner any more than not having sidewalk. I don't think it impacts the property value. And given that we are saying we want to be a walkable community, I think sidewalks are important. And so at this point, I would favor doing some kind of levy for sidewalks. I mean, to see if the community, if the community is behind it. So I'll just put that out there. For okay. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's and there might be some opportunity if you think about it, because of the part of the reason we haven't wanted to separate out levies is that we don't want. We're afraid people are going to pick and choose, and something's going to get left. Jason may not like this one, but we may want to we may want to combine streets and sidewalks into a levy. Mm -hmm. Transportation, a little transportation levy for both. <laughs> she would make him happy. Streets, bikes, and sidewalks. So I mean, just that just an idea. That certainly is not something we have to dis we, we don't yeah, have to even talk about. Yeah. So, um, okay, uh, Joan, I'm sorry. Joan Edwards, I live on West South College, and uh, this is part of the community that there's a lot of traffic in terms of coming and going from the schools, and there are trees that are huge catalpa trees that have buckled up a lot of the sidewalks, particularly on the north side of the street, to the point where some of those sidewalks are just about unwalkable and Gerald lives in that area so he knows the ones I'm talking about and those trees were not put in by the tree committee those trees have been here for 50 years at least because they're huge catalpas and they do make a mess but um, something needs to be done I think um, in terms of making the village responsible since that is a walkable part for the community at large particularly the high school students and the middle school well any of the students and coming and going from the park too so I would um, personally be in favor of having some kind of a, a levy that the village says okay we are going to be responsible for maintenance and repair of sidewalks because those trees aren't going to come down I would hope um, you know so I think a, a levy that says the village is part of the responsibility is to keep that walkability open and it desperately needs there's places that desperately desperately need some attention and they put a bike path in um, next to the <coughs> street so there's the street the bike path <coughs> the trees and then the sidewalk. The sidewalk. Yeah, it's crazy. And the sidewalks are really bad. However, the bike path, which was made out of a, a more um, asphalt, asphalt material, is not buckling. 
So maybe we ought to think about what we're making our sidewalks out of as part of the whole <coughs> uh, issue. Mm -hmm. So that maybe concrete blocks are not the best solution. But I think the village putting a levy in to make it uh, streets and sidewalks combined so that it's part of transportation would be desirable. Thank you. Thanks, Joan. Any other comments? Dan? Hello, uh, Dan Reyes. I apologize if I <clears throat> just came in uh, in the middle of that conversation uh, from another meeting, but uh, I, I did want to, uh, we're, we're talking about the sidewalks, I gather, or, mm -hmm. or the, the uh, forward going policy on that, um, which uh, from uh, what was just coming up, uh, it would be a question of continuing or not continuing the village's current responsibility with the sidewalks. Uh, there was one thing that occurred to me on a, a, a sort of technical side that I might be able to sh shed a little bit of light on, um, although I don't know if, it, if you'll find it to be useful or not, but uh, it seemed to me that the timeline with the sidewalks um, may deserve some consideration. And it could be if the village were at all amenable to maintaining its current position of having some responsibility or some vision to see itself responsible for the sidewalks, uh, the time frame in which they need to be maintained and renewed, if, it, if we look at the longer picture, uh, actually might be a bit longer, or could be extended a bit longer than has been proposed so far. The life cycle cost for a concrete sidewalk, if properly installed, should be 20 to 40 years. And some of them indeed seem to have been properly installed and have lasted that long, but are uh, getting near the end of that life cycle. Uh, but uh, the implication of that would be that they don't need to be renewed every five or ten years. Of course, there'll be some sections that are problematic, uh, where you have trees or maintenance that disturbs the conditions that uh, keep the sidewalk in some sort of good shape. But a longer-term plan could spe you know, spread this out at a slower pace, potentially, if, if the budgeting is a concern. And it could be spread out over ten years, quite feasibly. Uh, to lower the impact on the near-term budget. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that seemed to me a consideration uh, that could be on the table and might make uh, whichever path forward, uh, you know, add some more options to the table. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. I think uh, that five years was Paul, just because... I know, it, I don't think that <coughs> was... A, go for five years. Right, and I, don't, I, don't, I certainly wasn't thinking we were going to be replacing sidewalks in five years. Right. I, I don't think yeah. that was with the intent of the comment, but... Because if the levy isn't renewed, then... Yeah. Paul Avendroth. I have a sidewalk problem that I've been dealing with the village for decades over and the thought that I would be responsible for maintaining the sidewalk scares me. 48 years ago when I moved into the Winter Street house, water ran to the corner between the sidewalk and the street. Off the street, off the yards, to the corner. Maybe three decades ago, the village did some work and filled in that little swale to carry the water to the corner. Now water collects on the sidewalk. The only way I can maintain the sidewalk, which is safe route to school, is with a blowtorch and a vacuum cleaner. It's the only way I could get ice off of that sidewalk until their drainage is put back the way it was 48 years ago. So what's my alternative? If it's my responsibility to maintain it, there's nothing I can do to make that sidewalk safe. I don't know if I'm required to have a sidewalk. It might be better to remove the sidewalk. Then there's no liability. So, you know, it came because I thought that part of the discussion was making the owner responsible for maintaining the sidewalk. And at least in this case, you know, there's, there's no solution there. There's no way I can maintain the sidewalk. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Any other comments about sidewalks? Okay, we'll move on. The next item on the agenda is 2015 goals update. Uh, Marianne has been working on that. Did we, what? The, the, the part about the renew, or are we going to bring that Yeah, back? we're going to do that. do it later. That's it. Well, it's oh, a, it's a new agenda. business. Yeah, okay. it's already in the agenda. Okay, I'm sorry. 
Um, okay, if you recall, we had a spreadsheet that <coughs> Karen had done, I think, uh, last year mm -hmm. that had the 2014 goals. And last time I submitted just a document sort of, sort of like this. But um, I, I've submitted my thoughts on the goals, not in a spreadsheet, because I wanted to see if council, well, council's response to what I've done, and if we want to move forward, basically with what I've done, then I could put things, start putting things into a spreadsheet that would include who's going to do it and something about the timing. But what I've suggested is that um, we prioritize the goals, at least have sort of a top tier of goals, which I've suggested three to five goals, and I've listed um, potentially five. And um, that also, as we're looking at goals, that we request that our commissions, as appropriate, <coughs> create <coughs> annual goals. Mm -hmm. and that council have input into those as appropriate. And I gave some examples for HRC, for example, to be working on police community forums. And uh, I suggested that council request that the Energy Board uh, have a work on, get the Ener Efficiency Smart guy here and we see how we can utilize that. And uh, uh, Well, and I would imagine that the Environmental Commission will be working on in partnership with staff on the wellhead protection plan. So, <coughs> um, so the five things that I've listed as what I would think of as primary goals would be one, the three different things regarding water, which include the plant, planning it and <coughs> beginning construction, the bottleneck and loop issues, and well, and then uh, the wellhead start on the wellhead protection plan. Um, the second one, which I think we would want to talk about how we frame it, involves economic development. So, I mean, I just said, ha decide how to approach economic development and begin implementation. Um, then the third that I've listed um, is, I think, more a practice than a goal, but since we have never done it, which would involve reviewing the budget on a quarterly basis, and I, I also am suggesting reviewing our goals on a quarterly basis. Um, then uh, the sidewalk repair and construction, and I put in tax levy with a question. The, the things beyond that, uh, like six through 13, are things that were in our goal, they were all in our goals for 14, and some work has been done on them in some cases. Um, well, probably a little bit has been done on everything, but they haven't been completed. And then the last uh, line is uh, things that had been in 14, either, either we have completed or I'm saying we, I suggest we should take them off the table or I don't see them as goals. For example, utilize the village mediation program. I think that's more a process of how we work rather than a goal. So I will open this up to uh, council for discussion. Good job. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, I think, <coughs> yeah. Well, you know, I mean, what, uh, first of all, I guess I'd like to know what do you, what would you, would these top, would these things that I've listed one through five, does that make sense to everyone as being what we want to focus on? Or are there other things that you think? I mean, I think uh, Melissa implied that we need to be reviewing. We technically, we legally need to review our budget in a way every month, right? That we're going to get a, a review of that and the state of the budget every month. Um, whether she's here to formally present that every single month or not, I think was sort of vague yeah. at our last meeting. Yeah, um, and I was going to be meeting with. Mm -hmm. And then maybe right. you would and report then you would or maybe something. Report she, if she, would, she was under the here. weather, so we didn't get the chance. But I right. plan on meeting with her on that. Right. Network. Okay. So that's right. Thanks. To me, that's something that we should right. do now. To me, that we shouldn't make it a goal. We do it. Yeah. yeah. But I, I like the f top five uh, <coughs> goals. I think you did a, a great job of. Uh, I felt I was kind of right with you, um, both where what was really critical that we focus on and what's important but less kind of urgent I think um, so I think you did a great job of that 
um, I'd probably review our goals just realistically I would I guess I think we'd probably just review them biannually mm -hmm. the beginning of the year and at the middle of the year but not that I think it's bad to review them more often I just think it's unlikely that we will <laughs> So, although if there's a this view, it shouldn't yeah, be. Although I mean, these so these are things we're probably going to be working on on almost a yeah. you know every meeting mm -hmm. basis, especially yeah, that, as we're yeah. moving forward. Yeah, that's what I looked at. I you know it's mm -hmm. you know for example, number one, we're already on contract with the contractor to work us through that. So right you know, in in the bottleneck, uh, Patty has been working on possible solutions. So mm -hmm. you know, uh, again. It's it's we we it's in the mill and it's right. working. Yeah. So it's more or less getting progress reports on on where we stand. Well, yeah, but if you're reviewing your goals, your goals on a quarterly basis, if you've met one of the goals, you can always remove it from the list and put another one in its place. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can revise and mm -hmm. you know if you yeah. meet this goal, it should be review and revise. Yeah. Right. Actually, is what it should be. The, the only other thing I would say that with number five is instead of it being specifically the tax levy, I would I would think we need to deal with the fiscal sustainability of the village. Yes. Right. I right. think it needs yes. to be broader Broad. than that. I mean, the right. tax levy is one element of that. Mm -hmm. but right, because the one of the discussions we're going to start tonight is the delinquent utility discussion, right? Mm -hmm. which is going to take quite a bit of time. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, I think we should just take number three off. Is it... I, I mean, it, yeah, I, it's 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 a, it's a that's a, a practice. That's a something we're going to be doing. I don't think it's a goal, and that would actually go under the whole issue of fiscal sustainability of the village. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, well, economic. Do you see economic development as? distinct from fiscal responsibility. I do, yeah. Yes. Because yeah. we haven't really done yeah. much on it. <coughs> you know, the other thing I want to, maybe we can have a general one about, because so many of these things that you have, especially in the, the second category, are things that are being dealt with by, um, with commissions. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could have a general one about something about collaborating with commissions on their goals or. Mm -hmm. Well, in the, when it's, Put into the spreadsheet. Are, is there space for commissions? Right. Well, we there? put who could support yeah, it. Who, and yeah. So I think that will that will come in. But I like this idea that you talked about, Marianne, with commissions working on annual goals as well. I mean, that's been on the uh, agenda for for my commissions to sort of work on that. And uh, I, I mean, I like the idea of council also being privy to mm -hmm. what's going on and reviewing that. Seeing how we can collaborate, as when, you said. When you say privy or collaborate, I'm under the impression that the commissions are an extension of us. Right. But I don't know that we've ever had them come back and say. Well, and, <coughs> and I'm saying they should, so we make right. sure that we're that they're doing what we think they should be doing versus them doing what they think they should. Be doing, so. But I think that we've been having that discussion. I think that the fact that that we've we've been sticking to our reporting out at the second meeting of the month I think that we're pretty well informed of what our commissions are doing so I feel like you know it may not be as formal as you're talking about but I think it's it's happening well I think it should be a little more formal so we're not surprised because, okay you know, well some issues we are getting surprised not and they're coming to us asking for a decision and that's the first time we heard of it so you know which they're not, it's not getting reported on a monthly uh, basis. Right. Yeah, a good model is actually, Marianne, I think what you did with the Environmental Commission, where you talked about, <coughs> you know, here are some things that are priorities. So then turning that into a statement of goals uh, makes a lot of sense to me. So, so maybe if you want to go to the graph next time, and, and even for the commissions that are, are working on things and we know you can plug those in and the other ones just either leave it blank or, or something and also people could I thinking of sunshine law there if I send out the blank what I know people can email yeah back. oh yeah 
just any not to all attachments just to, to you me, and just then to I you can put it and then you the put document. it into the document and bring it back to the meeting so it can be discussed mm -hmm. publicly <clears throat> okay with the knowledge that any email that would get sent to you would be a public record that could be requested okay what about the second call though how how, how do we want to frame that or state that that's <coughs> I, this I mean, we suddenly have a staff John. person. <laughs> so, so um, I mean, I could get together with John. To that talk might about be a good idea. Would be to get together with John and maybe again, maybe if if there's a way to triangulate Karen involved in that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that seems to me the one that needs to be fleshed out the most. What, right. You know, what are we going to do con zero, concretely? John and Karen. Yeah, the others are, are things that are really happening. Right. Um, so I would put, I, I want us to remember goal three, even if it isn't really a goal, but that we're changing that practice. Mm -hmm. um, and so I would sort of make it maybe a bullet point of some sort under, yeah, maybe the, under the fiscal, fiscal responsibility. Fiscal responsibility. As part of our fiscal responsibility, we are committing to reviewing our budget. Monthly. Um, monthly, actually. Right. And, and those are and I mean we can we can try to review the goals quarterly no reason we can't try yeah. well, and those are under future agenda items mm -hmm. to keep them mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. the agenda so. okay and I guess I, I do like Karen's idea of is there a fifth goal that's related to again uh, collaborating with commissions I'd like to just think about that you know you guys stated it in the opposite previously which was that you task yourselves with communicating to your commissions their goals based on the council goals. So I mean, it's, it's, you're almost looking at it in a different way now, which is hmm, how can we move it the other direction? So uh -huh. I mean, that's just to throw that out there to, to say that's something you had done in the past if you want to throw it into the mix. But I, I think that's a process thing too, not a goal to mm -hmm. collaborate. Well. I, I'm not sure collaborate. I, well, I guess collaborating in the sense that council may have some parts and a commission may have some parts of things. Uh -huh. I mean, we don't need to have five necessarily. I mean, we could have four with <laughs> four with bullets. Well, or, or, I mean, or we could have, you know, the, the, the sub, we could have the commission goals individually, and obviously they always tie back to council. But until the commissions are done with them, it doesn't really come to us. You know, until they have something to propose or present to us, um, it's within the commission structure. So it's not really a council goal necessarily, although some of them are because the whole HR, th the, the whole police thing, we have tasks sat tasked back to HRC. Right. So. I mean, I think you do. You have direction. You're, I think. I think I have some direction. Good. Okay. I keep um, okay. The next thing, actually, we. I'm adding one other short, short item. I'm going to turn it over to Patty to um, uh, just give a short description of where we were with our executive session, where we are with the decision related to village solicitor. Um, council did meet in executive session. Um, there were, just to go back a little bit, there were all told eight applications for to be our village solicitor. Two of those applications were disqualified from the, um, because they did not comply with the requirements of the RFQ that was sent out. Um, they both had timeliness issues. The other one had a couple of other issues. So those were disqualified. The other six proposals were considered by council three were chosen for presentations which are the presentations we did last week um, council still has not made a decision uh, we are still information gathering um, on a, on one or two two of those and uh, council intends to um, have another executive session at the probably prior to the next council meeting and perhaps pre present legislation at that time that meeting Thanks, Patty. Uh, now we're on to new business, uh, utility delinquencies. Well, excuse me, solar array. 
Yeah. Oh, solar array, we did add that. I, okay. Um, another item um, from staff uh, about the solar array discussion. Right. Patty, I will turn um, that to you. Johnny and I met with um, Mary Ann and uh, Rick Walkie, and essentially, this inventory is getting more and more complicated as we go because part of the ordinance says that you can either generate 25 kilowatt kilowatts, which no residence is going to ever generate that probably, um, or your estimated peak load, whichever is less. That's what the ordinance says. Um, so we would have to really inventory it with estimated peak load. And to find that, Johnny can do it two ways. He can go back and actually look at all the bills for a three-year period and try to figure that out, where the highest peak was, or he can do a calculation that we talked to John Courtney about. Um, but essentially, it's going to require quite a bit of legwork. Now, we agree that this inventory needs to be done because Johnny's still finding more solar uh, installations. But what we would like for council to do is to hear from both sides and make a decision as to whether we are going to go ahead on this solar project. Because Johnny has devoted probably 30 hours to this already, Johnny. More. And uh, it's going to take a lot more of his time. So he's putting things on the back burner. Now, if we're going to move forward with this, then we will keep it up in front and we will get the inventory done and move forward. But if council's not going to move forward with this particular project, then we will do the inventory, but not we'll, it'll be at a slower pace so that he can keep up with other duties. So what we would like to recommend to council is that you set times to have each side of the coin come in, have the energy board come in with the presentation and, and answer the questions because I think Brian you tasked them with a few more questions you wanted information on. Um, we know that John Courtney is preparing the portfolio presentation and the rate study which he hopes to have done by the end of April and so what we would like to do is kind of set a couple of meetings where council can hear from the energy board at one and John Courtney at one and make a decision if we're moving forward with this. Meantime, Johnny can keep working on the inventory, you know, as he goes, but it's very time consuming for him to try to get this done as quickly as we had hoped to. Um, I, I'd like to comment a little too because I, I talked with Patty and Johnny fairly extensively. Um, and that and with Rick Walkie. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like there are some significant issues with that ordinance, the ordinance that was developed mm -hmm. to allow uh, residents and commercial solar. Mm -hmm. And that ordinance is going to have to be reworked. Right, whether this project goes forward or not. And one of the problems is how to um, assess the capacity of a, a solar project. Mm -hmm. um, I know that staff has some d various concerns about the uh, s uh, solar project, uh, which may be different than whatever John Courtney has. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that. Mm -hmm. Well, I think some of them yeah. are. I don't some of them are similar. Some yeah, of them are because different. some of them involve how we look at the how we conceive this project. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess I just. I'll, I'll talk with you some more because I had some thoughts about how we might look at this. But I, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with what Patty is saying. I mean, I think we want to present a sort of full picture to council of, of the, the possibilities of this kind of project and the concerns about this kind of project. I would agree with that. I mean, I will say something else that, that you said that the ordinance is going to have to be changed. I think something else that has to be addressed separately from the community solar discussion is how we keep people from installing solar mm -hmm. in our on their houses when they need permits which and when they need to be coordinating with our electric department that is something that absolutely ha because it's a safety issue um, and and it's an issue for we're an electric utility and and you know we have to at some point behave like an electric utility and know what's happening um, as far as the electricity being generated aside from our own utility. So that's something I would like to And that with. actually is one of the problems with the ordinance is the fact that it doesn't have a penalty clause. 
there's no penalty clause in that ordinance it doesn't normally at the end of it ordinance it'll say whoever <laughs> violates this ordinance is guilty of a whatever whatever misdemeanor and fine you know so, okay. get so I missed that meeting so I'll let you guys kind of discuss this um, well it sounds like we need a, a different ordinance we need somebody to look at best practices elsewhere mm -hmm. to get us we can do that. what we need uh, not the people who have solar arrays that we don't know about um, clearly don't have any kind of metering agreement with us. That's correct. Um, so effectively, they're viewing it as just cutting down their energy usage. Um, so I, I'm not an expert in this area, so this is where I feel like legal advice or whatever would be helpful because at some level of course I can decide I'm not going to turn my lights on at night anymore and I'm going to reduce my usage um, so I have that right um, this is a little different when you're generating energy but you're using it instead of putting see, it on. instead of putting it on the grill but you're not asking to be compensated in any way if you're producing extra um, so for me those are kind of uh, right. I don't I don't know what what the there that seems like that's probably an area of law that's been dealt with but we should have a better understanding of well and if you put your array up prior to the ordinance you don't have to have an interconnection agreement so right. then we have to once we get the inventory done we have to figure out who put their their array on when and whether it was prior Did to we require an interconnection agreement regardless you uh, don't have them for the regardless, regardless of, of whether whether it was before or after no. it's only for after the right okay. the rest are grandfathered okay. I would say that this in I don't Marion you were there you may know this and I mean I would consider the city of Oberlin probably a, a community to talk to to talk they have they're an amp community well, yeah we can they have but, um, and, and I and I will we'll, I'll do that um, well, we met with their inter, uh, their electric guy, but they really don't have much solar there either. But oh, I'll, I'll find out what mm -hmm. they. I mean, they have a big solar array uh, that's. But they don't have the a lot city. of residential. But yeah, they don't mm -hmm. have a lot of residential. But I'm guessing that maybe they're at least their ordinances and things are kind of uh, I'll see maybe best right. practice, but you never know. Um, so okay, so I guess the question before us from from staff is, do we want to have this two-part discussion? Maybe Athens. Mm. Well, check with Athens. Well, I think when you say do we want to have a two-part discussion, I, from what I understand, John won't be ready till the end of April. Uh, yeah, I I would say maybe have the energy board come on April twentieth and John come to the first meeting in May. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean. Uh, I mean that kind of makes sense to John me. Courtney or John John Courtney oh, okay mm -hmm. oh Johnny will be there too but <laughs> I mean that kind of makes sense to me because then you kind of have them back to back at your meetings and they can you can make that decision then and yeah if he could get us uh, I remember at our last one of our last meetings I, I I said I would like the the full graph of our yeah. right he's gonna present the entire portfolio yes that would be great <laughs> because it, and he is going to include the hydro projects that are getting ready to go online. Great. Cool. Okay. And Thanks. Patty, can you explain why it's important for him to give his whole report as part of examining the community solar project? I, the council asked to see it, I thought, as they wanted to see the portfolio because that's what part of the concern is, you know, how these pro not necessarily only this project but future projects like it if they continue would impact you know the our energy portfolio and the fact that um, you know as Johnny and I talked to you the other day you know there once these hydro projects go online there may be other people who would like to put in solar because they want their energy costs to go down and they may not be able to if we allow them to take up the rest of the solar. So I'm just, I'm just. I know that we talked about trying to get this 
done within three months and this extends it out and I know that the energy board well yeah it slightly extends it out but I mean there's been you know once we get into doing the inventory it just got more complicated so, so you're suggesting would you say that times again energy board on the 20th of April and John Courtney on the 5th the 4th of May I mean, that would still give them time. Could to, John come before the energy? I don't think he's going to be ready because oh, okay. when we talked to him today, he said he wasn't going to be ready till the end of April. Oh, okay. If you want the rate study. Yeah, yeah no, I think that's oh, important. Yeah. I mean, because this all does fit together. You know, is, is, the, is the community solar going to have an impact on our rates, on the rate, all of the rate payers? Um, so, so we've got some people that are going to be reducing their usage because they're, they're part of this but the rates on the community is going to go up because there's we're using less energy. The problem is is that we've got these contracts for a certain amount of electricity. If we don't use that, we're still paying for that power. My understanding as I'm learning about this is that the impact on our of the community solar is probably not going to be that great. Mm -hmm. And that may be true. That the hydro plants coming on and the increased cost of those could have some people want to do solar then that aren't so interested in that. There will be people, excuse me, <laughs> there will be people who want to put up solar so they can reduce their right. energy bill as opposed to the folks who want to put up solar to reduce their carbon footprint. Right. It's probably the most simplistic way to. Okay. Um, okay, then we'll move on now to new business utility delinquencies. Um, Patty, is that going to be you or Melissa? Melissa has done the lion's share of the work, so I'm okay. going to let her. And Brian, I think this was what the, um, didn't the auditor refer to the, yeah, yeah okay. We'll bring that up too. Um, I just want everybody to just draw their attention to the report. Um, I tried to give a background as well as um, what what efforts have been made in order to try to minimize the delinquency issue and then moving forward some of the things that we can do to try to continue to uh, diminish the number of delinquencies and the amounts of those. So um, I guess we'll start there with the report because it basically covers everything and then we can go from there um, what questions you all have and um, we're going to take a look at the recommendations and I'm sure that there will be some questions with those as well so I mean basically there hasn't been a whole lot that's been done with with delinquencies at one point there was a collection agency that was used and from what I understand, uh, the customer service issue that surrounded that was kind of a headache on the, the um, consumer's end as well as the finance office's end. So that was, um, that was the only thing as of recent that has been um, done in order to try to formally address the issue. Since Denise Swinger had been hired, mid-2013, she's been trying to do um, small things within her position to try to minimize the issue. All of our bills are sent out um, third party. We use a, an off-site processing center, which the files are sent to. Anybody that's finaled out is not sent by them, but the files are sent to us so that we can continue to reprint as many times as necessary. And nobody was really sending any kind of like second third and fourth notice and Denise has been trying to do that so within the last year the delinquencies have came down a little bit so she's tried to do um, small things within her power and her spare time to be able to try to uh, help address that but it really is kind of a bigger issue um, as is the uh, majority of the uh, delinquencies are renters that move out of town and then we have no way to kind of follow them so so to speak I mean we could with a couple of different um, suggestions in the moving forward section but that's really where most of the focus needs to lie is how we address the issue of uh, dealing with the renters in town can I ask you a question it's back on the graph the 25 years ago we were at 438 10 years 239 those haven't been collected they've just been written off right 
No, those are actually still on our books. But so between in in 15, in that 15 year period, 200 and Two hundred thousand dollars was actually collected in utility delinquencies. Oh no, these were these were the amounts of delinquencies They're at those periods of time. Too. If we look at twenty-five years forward, that's the total. If we look at ten years forward, that's the total. So it's just kind of showing you how how it's grown over the uh, different periods of time. So all that stuff is still on the books. So nothing has ever. Oh, been so you're off. saying now it's. You're saying now it's 438 plus 239 plus 89 plus 13? No, uh, 438 is the total. 239 includes 89. Okay. Yeah, I was just giving different periods of time. Our system only goes back to 1990, so our total delinquencies on the books are 438,000. I was just showing the impact okay. and how it has diminished slightly in only a year it's down to 13,000 where the average was I think it was 19 20,000 was what it was up to mm -hmm. yeah, yeah 20 yeah it, w it was about twenty thousand dollars was the average so the average the yearly average has been brought down a little bit just by doing little things that weren't within the office's power to do so <laughs> does it make sense to write off um, well, we what's the stat? There's a statute of limitations on a lot of this. There right? is, but um, it's people have came back into town, and when they've came back into town, if we've still had that on there, I mean, it would some we've been able to alert some people of that, and then they have been able to pay. So I don't really know why it's been left on for as long as it has, but that's it's all there still. I mean, I really believe what council has to consider is it, back in her moving forward section, she has six bullet points mm -hmm. of her recommendations. Um, and personally, I'm, I'm for all of them, except I, I'm, I mean, I don't necessarily see the point of being involved with the collection agency, but um, that would probably be one I wouldn't consider. Well, and, and I will tell you that when we, Melissa and I and Brian, um, met with the um, auditor for the um, for the draft post audit report um, that you'll all be getting I think within two couple of weeks he said it should be soon <coughs> one of the things that he did point out to us had to do with the delinquent utilities and he he said and we didn't ask him he volunteered the fact that most communities leave it with the property owner yes and that would also solve the that's problem. That's how we've handled our property, just as a matter of being a good citizen. And honestly, I think it should be the law. Right. Well, right. and it would also solve the other problem that we have of what Melissa calls the in-betweens. Yes. Um, do you want to explain what an in-between is? Basically, the property owners, once, once somebody finals out and moves out, if there's not somebody that moves in right away, if somebody finals out and they move out on the 31st and somebody moves in on the 1st, then it's seamless. Oftentimes it's not seamless and there could be, you know, a couple days gap, a couple months gap. <coughs> and then the utilities automatically go back into the property owner's name and then the property owners just won't pay for that either. We've got some that are that have pretty high in between bills. Some of the landlords. So, so if the if the property did stay with the property owner, it would solve that problem as well. Do we need an or I was, I was so say. it says some of which would require changes to the current ordinance. I'm with Karen. I'm I I think we would only go with a collection agency if there was really. Well, I, I think we can actually set that up ourselves. I mean, it sounds like we've got a staff member who's somewhat doing that. So uh, that's. Yeah. An so I would say the other, resort. the other, um, the other bullets I'm for. Which ones would require? Um, uh, right. I mean, which is legislation and which is just policy practice? Uh, one is legislation. Two is practice. Um, three is probably the same ordinance of legislation. Um, legal notification can be a procedure or practice. Um, the other, the last one, reporting the names in default to credit agencies could be a practice if it were included in the ordinance. What we need to do is design a policy and procedure manual that includes all of this in it and pass that as an ordinance. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, that's the simplest way to do it because it has everything in it. And I'm working on the policy and procedure manual. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of knowing how council wants to proceed and put them in into that for presentation before you. Right. I'm, I'm all for all of those I mean, except can, for the collection agency. I can do that. It's a, I mean, it's mostly done. I mean, it seems like we can do the collection agency at any time if we decide. That would mostly be something that you would recommend. And I, I, I'm even a little bit iffy on the, the reporting to credit agencies, and I don't know if that has to be included. I wouldn't, in. I wouldn't do that for a utility bill unless it reached, a, I mean, you could put I a was thinking, caveat yeah, that if it's a certain amount. Reached a certain amount or mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. we, retain the, if, we if retain the right or something. But yeah, with a, within a, some kind of policy. But I, w I, would, I was thinking that too, so I'm glad you brought it up. I, I would say I would uh, put that later. If we assess with the properties, though, I mean, that's going to clear up the majority of all of this because mm -hmm. somebody has to own the property, no matter whose debt it is. So mm -hmm. I think that that's the biggest, the biggest one in my mind. So do you both have the direction you need from us as to how to move forward? Yeah, I will. Uh, I'll get the policy and procedures manual written and send it to Melissa to look at. Johnny, I think I sent it to you and Jason as well, didn't I? It's so, just going to have to be something that we try to get finalized before September if that's something that we want to do this year because the Green County Auditor only allows us to assess properties once a year versus continually throughout the years other communities do or other counties. So do. if you all just move that forward uh, I should have it as by the first meeting in March to for first your meeting first in March. review at okay. least. Yeah, for your first review at least. Because I think it's, it's important sooner. that, you know, citizens know that we're going to be discussing this so yeah, yeah uh, I agree. speaking of which uh, citizen comment on this topic okay um, thanks Melissa you're not Thank going you, anywhere Melissa. are you <laughs> the levy, the um, levy, the levy timeline discussion. okay I um, now this this isn't necessarily set in stone um, I, I do need I, I, I do need um, kind of Judy to look over it to make sure that my dates and everything were correct, which I think that she did. Um, so this is just in draft format. Um, I talked to the Board of Elections. I talked to the County Auditor. I had no idea that November of this year was even an option until I talked to him. He said it was an option should we plan to go that way. So I, um, I made this timeline with every single possible um, effort um, via election we would have before this thing would be set to expire which is at the end of 16 and collections would cease in 17 or payments would be um, ceasing in 17 so I thought that May would be our first attempt but he said that we we could do it in November so I included that just as a discussion point um, so that we've got all of the possibilities before us but <coughs> based on what I gathered from the Board of Elections and from the County Auditor I think I've got this pretty solid and I looked at the calendar to try to figure out when council was meeting and everything like that so um, this we've got three we've got three attempts at any kind of uh, levy renewal so it's it's just whenever council feels comfortable proceeding I'd, I'd, I'd hope that we'd at least go with the um, May at the, at yeah. the right. you know. Yeah. That's latest. absolutely what yes. I think. I think the go. May is a good, is a good thing. Mm -hmm. We've got the mm -hmm. charter thing happening. I think we need. It's look, an election Council year. election. The council election. Okay. I think it's too hard to do it in the yeah. November. And, and I really do want, I mean, we have, we have philosophically um, had this as, as a single operating levy, which is, very unlike most communities. Most communities do have individual levies, parks levies, police levies, road levies. We, we intentionally kept it as an operating levy because we felt like all of those services were of value to the community and were part of what contributed to the quality of life here. So if we are going to separate out something into and have another levy, which might be a transportation levy, a sidewalk levy, I wouldn't mind those actually happening at the same time only because I do think that that's that's the way we approach things I mean we approach things here more holistically and I would like people to know what what we're gonna have to do now the only other caveat I would put on to this is um, having maybe a preliminary discussion with the school board as to what their levies timelines are mm -hmm. we do try to um, not do them at the same time. So as liaison, should I 
Yeah. They they talk, I know they've been talking about it. I know yep. that I think they do have one. I don't think they have any new ones coming up, but I think they do have a renewal, so that may be of less concern. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just a point of reference, our uh, property taxes annually are almost $900,000, and this levy um, contributes 730000 of that. Yeah, so if that perfect. goes away, it, we'd get about a hundred and set. We'd be working with one hundred and seventy thousand versus nine hundred thousand in the general fund. <coughs> not it, yeah. But I, I think you know we we really do this year. Um, we need to start putting a, a levy committee together, and you know mm -hmm. I think because what what are we looking at? I mean uh, we're looking at January fourth. I mean so we we still have a lot of work to do mm -hmm. this Even year do in twenty fifteen to get it on the May ballot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I think that we need to, we obviously need to get started on that. And I think the other thing is to, to, for you, Melissa, to delineate this whole issue of the homestead exam exemption and um, if we do, I mean, maybe we don't want to have a separate levy. Maybe we do want to increase this. I think that there is a way for us to maintain the levy we have with the homestead exemption but add add on top of it the same a single levy so we want to we want to maintain that homestead exemption so that the state is paying that percentage that the homeowners if, because if we if we change the levy if we change it enough then basically it goes back to the homeowners are responsible for that homestead exemption the state won't pay it any longer so we need to maintain that So the state pays, or I mean, like for senior citizens. Yeah, that, that was one of the changes that Kasich made. He, he eliminated it. Yeah, he eliminated the, the homestead exemption. In. That's how he got all. That's why they're sitting on pots of money at the state. And I think that that provides about one hundred thirty thousand dollars a year to the mm -hmm. general fund, the homestead. So that's and and so now the state's paying it. Otherwise, that would be coming out of our citizens' pockets if we make changes. Okay. So. Okay, well, so then we that. might want it to be two separate. Well, but you can change it a certain amount and not lose the homestead exemption. But if you change it past that percentage, I think. Right. Well, yeah, we just need to. Lose. We just need to have guidance on that. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Melissa. You're welcome. Thank you. Get some rest. Any any comments or questions about the levy from citizens? Okay. Um, and then a new item on the agenda, uh, it'll probably be a quick discussion, um, either John or, or Patty, about a proposal from ICMA. Um, yes, I, I'm a member of ICMA, which is the International City County Managers Association. And um, they sent out an email, which they said it was a follow-up email, which I, I didn't see the first one, but essentially they have an exchange program um, for uh, city county managers who, with uh, that's operated through the State Department, the U.S. State Department. And essentially what it is is if we host um, an exchange manager from um, it's um, Southeast, Southeast Asia, Asia. Um, several different countries in Southeast Asia, if we were to host these um, uh, two international fellows to come over here for a set period of time, it's either May 2nd to 30th or October 10th to November 7th, and they come here, they get a stipend um, that pays for their transportation, their lodging, and their meals, okay? So the only thing that the village would be required to provide them is like office space and a project to work on. Um, and um, they would do the legwork. They want the project to be something that engages the community. Pretty sure we can find that here in Yellow Springs. Um, and then um, they would make a presentation to council and if we were to choose to participate in the other way, we could send someone from here to a host country um, in return, and we would pay, they would get a stipend to pay lodging meals, et cetera, et cetera. And I would say, let's send John if mm -hmm. we decide to do that because he's got a nice long career ahead of him that mm -hmm. it would benefit him and the village um, to have that experience. So, um, unfortunately, this application is due in by Friday if we choose to participate. We can either host the May or the October fellow or both, 
if we choose to put it off and host the October Fellow, we can um, apply it later to do that. Um, John did come up with a list of potential um, projects that he thought would be good because John would be the perfect person to work with this on. Um, bicycle infrastructure, walkability analysis report that includes sidewalks, pathways, interconnectedness, that type of thing. Uh, glass farm visioning, um, CVE visioning. Brian had a potential project of um, HRC uh, forum um, on uh, social media interaction. Right, um, proper use of social media. Right, and so um, the question for council is, would you like to participate um, I mean, as you can see in my report, which I cannot lay my hands on. Um, so the one that was in the packet? Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, or the one you sent out no, the to one us. That, the one that I sent you later. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't yeah. get this part right. out until afterward. Um, we would, um, the program encourages hosts to provide an agenda that engages fellows in local government operations and policy making as much as possible. Uh, they can include coordination with state, state legislature and bodies as well. Um, they want them to get as much exposure, um, have tours around the facilities, um, town celebrations, volunteering uh, opportunities. Um, the person, uh, Lindsay, who I was emailing with actually lives in Youngstown. Mm -hmm. um, so she was pretty excited that we may host somebody. Um, so, so I, I think we should look at October, right? maybe. May is too, a little too soon. Yeah, I saw that they, per, you know, need more in May, but mm -hmm. I really think given Street Fair, that'd be a great way for them to kick off and and then you know see the village and that level mm -hmm. and then move in. So I agree. Right, and October. if and if it works out in October, we can always choose to do it again next year if right. if you know that's what we want to do. Now, but do the two come at the same time? You do. I think you do get. Um, I think you get one at, at the May and one at October right. if you host both. Is is my so we could just host one. We could just host one. Okay. And yeah, and they would they would get a stipend to stay wherever, which at that point perhaps the hotel mm -hmm. would be done. And they could. I mean, and I also think that May may be a little too early for John. I mean, he's still just getting his feet on the ground. And um, I mean, what do you guys? What do you think? You think May's too soon? Yeah, definitely. I mean, is council generally supportive of Patty I'm and John? Supportive of it. I yeah. think they should decide if they feel like they right. could do it in May. I wouldn't see any problem with them doing it in May. If they want to wait till October, do it in October. So you all do what it sounds like fun. Yeah, good idea. Think you can do, it. do you have to uh, list the projects now, or you have to give them? You have to give them at least a couple of projects okay. to choose from. Yeah. I think all of those sound good. I mean, it, mm -hmm. and there were a couple other ones too. I mean, I think there's something with our community access mm -hmm. station could be interesting. Um, well, I, I will say I'm I'm very interested, having spent 12 years in Southeast Asia, uh, to help with that, and I can definitely help with developing an agenda that we can put together. Mm -hmm. I think there's a potential to um, some of our contacts in Columbus that we could get them up there to see that aspect right. as well. Well, we can we can make those people very busy and and I think engage them in a number of different a number of different levels. So I think it would be exciting who's from yeah. Vietnam who's interested in city planning. And mm. so if he's still around, I mean, he's flying off to graduate school, he's senior. So uh, so he so, probably won't be around, but I'll, uh, I definitely will be very interested in where, you, where the person might be coming from. Right. Because I've been reading all of his applications. <laughs> so should we wait? Should we apply? It's up or to you. We, I agree I, with Lori. Whatever your, you guys want to do. Mm -hmm. okay. It's mostly going to affect you. It's not really going to affect us. Okay. It sounds like fun. And so you decide when you when it feels best for you. I don't okay. I think we're together if tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. If you thought that there was something that we, they could really do and get accomplished in May. Yeah. Because May is the need, strong, yeah. then then go, go for it. Go for it. Okay. I agree. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Uh let's see. You're back on board. I'm back You're on board. board. Uh, we met with h and again. We went to see one more water plant, which was probably the closest to all of the ones that we, um, <clears throat> that were, you know, of all the ones that you saw, the, the one that we're going to build. 
Um, they are going to start work on the water softening option information and planning on presenting that at the uh, public meeting um, in the first week of March. John, did, is that where we moved it to? Yes. Um, do you have a date? Do you have a firm we date? We don't have a date yet. Um, we will have a date by hopefully the second meeting in, in, uh, in February. Okay. Um, we told Sam we would like to announce it at the second meeting. Um, <clears throat> As you can see there, um, excuse me. Um, have you and John sent thank yous to the folks that we visited? Mm -hmm. There's the staff people. Um, did you do that? Because I thought Sam was doing that, but I have not done that. Okay, I will check with yeah, Sam. Yeah, follow up because okay. you know people were amazing. The people, yeah, I mean they. Mm -hmm. Number one, they real, were real proud of their plans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And number two. Uh, it was ama amazing the knowledge that these guys have of their operations. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it, it was a real good learning experience, and uh, they presented another mm -hmm. uh, technique for softening mm -hmm. that oh. some of the experts <laughs> didn't, didn't think of. So yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that was a really unique yeah, one. That yeah, last it one was. was. And water plant operators love yeah. their water plant. I mean, <laughs> these guys, these, the, the operators that we talked to were so proud. They love talking about it. Joe and um, Brad and Richard were just, you know, talking to them. I've got so, we've got so many pictures of these guys talking <laughs> together. And it's, they, they talked for hours. They speak their own language. Yeah, it, was, it was great. Their own it language. Was, and I think any of them would be available, you know, if we go with a particular process to have the guys back over again to get more information and training. So it, it was a great process. Oh, Joe's already saying, can I go back to Jackson County? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Joe. Jackson County is, is was out in, you, we, you thought was the middle of yeah. but uh, they supplied water to a uh, human. 38 big miles, area. square miles area. or something, yeah. It was amazing. It was amazing what, what that plant did. <coughs> it was capable of doing so. Yeah. Um, so the next thing that is in my report there is uh, an update essentially on the filings in the um, Dayton Power and Lights request for a new distribution rate and uh, I will keep you posted as that moves along. Um, the information from John Courtney in, is in there on how to uh, potentially assess that um, and really that is all I have in my report. It looks really long but that's all that's in there. Okay. So. John? Uh, we talked a little bit already about the water plants. Uh, right. so it's a very nice water plant. We, we have some <laughs> pictures of the water plants. Um, each picture is one picture from each different water plant that we visited in the last two weeks. Um, on the 21st, we went to the Harbor Water Plant, which is the one that's under construction. That's in the picture on the right. Um, then White River North is the picture on uh, the bottom left. Uh, the Tonka Dualator, which is kind of like a water plant in a box, is custom built and, and brought on location is the middle picture with the green boxes there on both sides. And then finally is the uh, the Jackson County, Ohio water plant that we visited on the 28th and they utilize uh, sand filtration, which is a method that we did not see at all in any of the other uh, trips that, that we had looked at. So this was definitely a very interesting um, and so an eco-friendly way to treat right. water mm -hmm. and uh, we were, it was very impressive. Mm -hmm. so, so John, when you say an automatic, automated box, you mean like it's prefab? <laughs> it and is a prefab. Got, it's, okay. it's, it's literally in a box and they bring it in and drop right the box in. in. Mm -hmm. huh. yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. They have the wall something they put it in. And if something goes wrong, it calls you on the cell phone and tells you what's wrong with it right. to come back and fix it. <laughs> they can all do that. Wow. Yeah. They, all do that. <laughs> they can all do that, yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> Data does that. Does yeah. that. Um, so aside from the water plant tours, uh, planning commission is coming up next Monday. We have two items on our agenda. first one is a request uh, by uh, Morgan Family Foundation to locate their offices at 506 South High Street. The second is an application to construct an uh, accessory dwelling unit on top of a new garage at 1108 South Xenia Avenue and that meeting is at 7 p.m. on Monday if you wish to attend. Uh, a couple of our planning commission members uh, also attended the David J. L. Lord planning and zoning workshop in Anderson Township near Cincinnati on Friday. Um, 
The workshop featured an excellent array of presentations uh, regarding some basics on planning and zoning, ethics, planning law, uh, foundations of the roles of planning commissioners. It also had this really great presentation on parking policy. <laughs> presented by one John Young. <laughs> <laughs> that I may have presented on. Um, <laughs> and uh, it was Who attended? All, you said two people. Two people. Uh, yes, uh, Susan Stiles and, and Rose Bizzell, which is Rose is in the audience tonight. Um, so how did you do, Rose? It was great. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> the David J. Elor, uh, that training is one of the best, and for, to have John asked to present, I think, is a great honor for him. So, the yes. keynote speaker, uh, thank you. The keynote speaker was uh, I'm blanking on the guy's name, but he had a book, and his focus was on placemaking mm -hmm. and uh, in doing things differently from on a local level. And uh, I have that book in my office if anyone wants to take a look at it. Uh, I think it's called Think Locally. Or, uh, so it was a good work. And I also saved some of the handouts that I got from the workshop. So those will be on hand as well for people to take a look at. And, and then finally, um, you know, prompted from our discussion last council meeting about the glass farm, the conservation area there, uh, decided to take a look at uh, what our zoning allows for the entire parcel and, uh, and figure out and develop sort of some type of plan to uh, to uh, look at how that detention area will, will function with future development, whether it stays as a detention basin or uh, moves into the wetlands uh, type of environment. Uh, you know, my goal with this is to create a couple of things here. One is a profile uh, for potential of economic development, so we know how many acres are developable space, what are the p possible site potentials, and challenges that if a developer was to come in, how would they look at mitigating stormwater uh, detention runoff? Um, how does that factor into some of the things that the village is, is enacting there? And also how this kind of ties into the village's past plans and some of the things that have come out of the village's comprehensive plan and the visioning document that was done in 2010. Uh, my goal is to look at all this and, and try to figure out a way, what are the ways forward where we can develop uh, you know, ensure that you know that this stuff comes together in a way that's ecologically uh, sustainable and also uh, is also and also realizes the, the village's goals for development potential as well. Sounds good. Um, in that regard, uh, and in regard to the glass farm, I mean, I, my sense it's always been looked at as mixed use development. And um, we had, there was a presentation at council by Sarah Hippensteel, mm -hmm. I don't think I was on council at the time, on low impact development. And um, I don't know that. Planning Commission? It was, yeah. It was at council, I don't know. It was remember. Planning Commission. Oh, yeah. was Planning Commission? It was at Planning. It but was good. Um, I don't know that, she, she is with the Miami Conservancy District, and I'm sure there are other people that can speak to that, but I was very impressed with that. Uh, about the idea of you don't just build huge detention basins that sort of sit there, but actually within the development itself, you do things. So, yeah. so you may well know about all this. I don't know, but I can put you in touch with her. Yeah, uh, that'd be great. Great. Uh, Judy, staff report. Oh, you have a lot to report, I see. You darn busy, so busy that. It's a really short report saying how busy it was. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's talk about future agenda items. Um, one thing to remind Judy is that the next meeting is the 17th of, because of the holiday, it's the 17th yeah, of February. I, I knew that, but I, <coughs> I have somewhere, oh, the HRC. The HRC report. And I, I think you can, the resolution, the 2015-05, I think we can confirm that for the 17th. Probably. I think we will have a resolution yes. at that point. Um, we'll have the uh, draft commission's ordinance for the 17th, yeah. Marianne. Oh, okay. Where's that? Okay, just whatever. Um, I Would you please add, I don't think it's on here, add the joint meeting with Miami Township Trustees on the 30th? of March yep. and I had requested to make a report at the next meeting on the climate action planning group. okay what what's happening with that and that'll be at the next one yes 
why do you want to make that um, should we have you make that part of um, commission reports it's, or, you, or, do, or won't it's be that really frequent separate. okay then we'll put that under I, mean, I would see the environmental commission and the energy board um, well and actually there Deward is involved that in the planning group Deward who's on the environmental commission is involved and Rick Wacky from and Eric Johnson are so people from both commissions are involved but mm -hmm. um, it's really at this point it's a separate okay. thing and okay. neither commission is exactly taking on a piece of it formally anyway yeah. um, anything else anybody can think of well I'm actually good uh, we should take off the quarterly budget review and I've actually added it to the standing reports um, for the second meeting of the month Okay. Oh, okay. Utilities policy and procedure manual. Mm -hmm. Do we have an ongoing, um, we need an ongoing item for sidewalks, or do we want to say March, the first meeting in March is for Jason to come back? Yeah, that's what he's planning. So March 4th, is it March 3rd? March 3rd? I mean, 2nd. I'm looking 3 2. March 2nd, so sidewalk discussion. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Um, anything else? I think that's probably enough. Um, and I will entertain a motion uh, to go into another executive session for the purpose of discussion of potential or pending litigation. So moved. Second. Judy, please call the roll. Yes, Winthrop. Yes. Aspen. Yes. Sim. Yes. Out. Yes. Oh, I might have a double edit this meeting, but I think by the time we do a gym meeting. Okay. Um, I think we want to start it. It'll be at seven. Okay.